In the last lecture, we learned about string interpolation. We use string interpolation to achieve one-way data binding by passing data from the component class to its view template. Now, in this lecture, we are going to talk about property binding. We also use property binding to achieve one-way data binding by passing data from the component class to its view template. But the difference between string interpolation and property binding is that in string interpolation, we use it for displaying a piece of data in the HTML. For example, displaying the title of a product or name of the product or something like that. But we use property binding to bind the property of a DOM object to some value which we have in the component class. In this way, property binding allows us to show or hide DOM element or manipulate the DOM in some other way. So in this lecture, let's go ahead and let's learn more about property binding with some examples. Again, here we have our product list component.html file and here we have product list component class. Now what we want is here we want to show an image for this product. So before this paragraph element, I'll go ahead and I'll use image tag. And in there, let's go ahead and let's specify the source tag. And to this source tag, we need to specify the path of a image file. Now, in order to save some time here in the sample files folder, I have one image. Let me drag it and let's go to VS Code. And let me go ahead and let me paste it inside this assets folder. And inside we have that image folder. So let me put it inside this image folder. Okay, and we don't need this planet.jpg file anymore. So let me go ahead and let me delete it. Okay, and I want to display this product image before the product details. So for that, we can say it is in assets folder. In there, we have the images folder. And in there, we have iPhone.png. Okay, so let me save the changes. And if we go to the web page, that image should be displayed. Okay, now here what we are doing is we are hard coding this source path. So we are hard coding this source path and we are assigning to this source attribute. Now instead of doing it like this, what we can do is in our component class, we can create a property or maybe inside this product object itself, we can create a property, let's say P image. Okay, and to that we can assign that value. So let me go ahead and let me grab that image path from here. I'll cut it and I'll paste it here. And now we want to use this property of this product object in our view template. So here either we can use string interpolation syntax like this and there we can say product.p image and if we save the changes if we go back to the web page that image is still displayed. So we can also use string interpolation syntax here but instead of using string interpolation syntax since here we are trying to assign some dynamic value to an attribute of an html element we can use property binding syntax so here we will not use string interpolation syntax instead we will use property binding syntax and for the property binding all we have to do is we have to wrap this attribute within square brackets like this and then we can assign a set of double quotes and inside these double quotes, we can write any TypeScript expression. Okay, so inside these double quotes, we can write any TypeScript expression. Here, we want to use the P image property of the product object. So we can say product dot P image. And that should be it. If I save the changes and if we go back to the web page, that image should still be displayed there. But now we are using property binding syntax. So here we are binding the property of a DOM element to a dynamic value, a value from our component class, right? So this is what property binding is. Now let's take one more example. So after these product details, let's go ahead and let's add a button element. And there let's say by now. Okay. And on this button element, let's go ahead and let's add a property called disabled and what we want is we want to make this buy now button disabled if the product is not in stock but if the product is in stock in that case we don't want to make this button disabled so currently since we have used this disabled property if we go back to the web page there you will see we have this buy now button but it is disabled 
okay so what we want is if the product is in stock we don't want to disable this button this button should not be disabled but if the product is not in stock in that case this buy now button should be disabled so let's go ahead and let's do that for that let's go back to vs code and again here i'm going to use property binding syntax and for property binding we wrap the property the html attribute within square brackets and to that we can assign double quotes and in there we can write any typescript expression now here we are simply going to check if product in stock is not greater than zero so i'll paste it here and we'll simply use a not operator on this expression so i'll wrap it within parentheses like this and i'll use a not operator so currently if you go to this product list component.ts there you will see that in stock is zero so if you go to the web page at this time the button should be disabled but if we go back and if we change this in stock to maybe 10 and if you save the changes and now if we go back you will see that that button is enabled so you see here we are passing data from the component class to its view template and there we are assigning that data to an html property now you might say here if we can also use string interpolation then why do we need another feature like property binding well that's because we cannot use string interpolation for all types of html attribute for example in case of this disabled if i use string interpolation instead of property binding so if i wrap this within double set of curly braces like this here it will not work if i save the changes and if i go to the web page there you see the button is disabled and it is not working properly so for html attributes like disabled hidden and checked for these three html attributes the string interpolation syntax will not work in that case you will have to use property binding syntax and that's why we have string interpolation as well as property binding for one-way data binding when we want to display some data in the html we use string interpolation but when we want to assign some dynamic value to an html attribute there we use property binding okay i hope it is clear so here instead of using string interpolation syntax let's use property binding okay and let's wrap this property this html attribute within square brackets and now if we go back it should be working you see button is enabled but if we change it to zero if we go back to the web page now it is disabled all right so i hope with these two examples now you know what is property binding and how we can use it as i mentioned when we wrap an html attribute within square brackets and to that when we assign double quotes inside that double quotes we can write any typescript expression let me show you one more example of property binding so let's go ahead and let's create an input element in this input element let's say i want to have a value property and in this value i want to show some value but i want to show that value dynamically so basically what i want is in the component i want to have a property here let me go ahead and let me create a property and i will call this property maybe name and let's say john doe okay so here we have a name property assigned with this value john doe and now we want to display this value inside the input element so here to this value we want to assign the value stored in this name property for that again we can use property binding syntax so what we will do is we'll wrap this value within square brackets and then here we can write any typescript expression here we simply want to use this name property so i'll go ahead and i will assign that name property to this value attribute if i save the changes if you go back to the web page now we should also have an input element and there you will see that the value is john doe the value stored in this name property now there is one more thing which you will not find in many tutorials and that is instead of using these square brackets like this what we can also do is we can use bind before these attributes for example i can say bind value and in this way also it should be working if i save the changes and if we go back you see still this input element is assigned with the value of the name property but now 
for the property binding we are not using square brackets we are using bind same thing we can do here so instead of wrapping this disabled attribute within square brackets i can use bind like this and if you go to the web page button is disabled let's go back to component class there let's change in stock to 10 let's save the changes let's go back to the web page and now the button is enabled so you can also use bind instead of square brackets but using square brackets is more common so we will use that itself and here also instead of bind we will use square brackets now just like property binding we also have something called as attribute binding now here you can ask what is the difference between an html attribute and an html property the html attribute represents the initial value and it does not change but a property represents the current value and it can change for example we have accessibility attributes like area label area hidden area expanded area control or we have data attributes like data id data name data value and we also have this call span which is a table attribute we use it on table columns so these attributes when you try to bind them using property binding you will get an error there you need to bind them using attribute binding so let's try to understand what is that so on this input element itself let's go ahead and let's try to use an accessibility attribute called area hidden okay and here let's try to bind it by wrapping it within square brackets like this and you see here we are getting an error and the error says can't bind to area hidden since it is not a known property okay that means this area hidden here it is not a property it is an attribute and for binding attributes all we have to do is we have to say attr dot and then the attribute name and then again within these double quotes we can assign any typescript expression to these attributes so if you want to perform attribute binding you can do it something like this all right so this is all from this lecture if you have any questions then feel free to ask it thank you for listening and have a great day